Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to see how to configure Modbus TCP client that is the master version in Modbus TCP in the S7-1200 PLC. Okay, so the S7-1200 PLC has an inbuilt Profinet port which can be configured for Modbus TCP. No additional hardware is required. So the Modbus TCP, the PLC can be configured as a client or as a uh, server. So client means master, okay, it's similar to master in 485 and server means uh, the slave similar to in RS485, okay. So any device that gives the data to the master is called as the uh, server and any device that is reading the data from the server is called as the client, okay. Here the client is the master, so this you have to remember, okay. So let's quickly set up our hardware, so it's pretty simple, 12, 12. 1215C, we are using the DC-DC relay module. We can use any, any PLC because every, everything has Ethernet in it. So DC-DC relay is the module that we have. And quickly uh, configure it. So I am adding the device. So quickly, yeah. relax us, next, finish. Now we have to do a few things. Enable the connection mechanisms. This is better. It will not make any uh, change, but it's better to enable it. You can also enable the system and clock memory. System and clock memory. Then we have to change the IP address of our device. So it is 1.11 in the lab. So you can put any IP you want <coughs> as per your requirement. Okay, any IP you want as per your requirement. Okay, so now let's go to your PLC program. Let's go to the main block and quickly start the programming. So since you are already familiar with the RS-485 uh, communication procedures. So this should be much more simple. This will be much more simple. Okay. Let's quickly find it. So let's go to the instructions pane. And here you have to go to communication. Then you have to go to <coughs> others. And you have Modbus TCP. Okay. We have the Modbus TCP. Here if you see, there is no... Um, MB com load block because it's since it's a IP based system you just need to add one data type there and that should you know solve all your issues okay so that is the advantage of using a Modbus TCP as well and Modbus TCP is more faster when comparing to uh, Modbus 485 so first of all we are going to configure a client we are going to configure a client so the client let's create the DB okay so now let's enable it, usual thing, so we need a, so enable will be from the, so for the MB client, let it be, uh, let's say always enabled. So here on the request, let's say I give M0.5, that is our uh, one hertz clock. So disconnect, we just need to give a dummy address. So let's say I give M10.0, a disconnect tag. So you need a MB mode. So you remember the MB mode, right? Zero means reading the data. So we are going to try to read the data. So MB data address from where I want to read. So I'm going to read from 4001. And I'm just going to read one value for now. Then the MB data point is going to be MW100. So it is going to store in MW100. <coughs> one more thing is we need a MB connect block. So this is very important here. The MB connect block is very important. So before starting that, let me just quickly set up the done and busy bits. So MB client DB. So let's see have the done bit. Should have the busy bit. You should have the error bit as well, if I'm not wrong. Error bit. And you also have the status bit. Status. Okay. So now this is done. And on the connect block, what you have to do? On the connect block, what do we need to do? So in the connect block, let's go into the connect. Let's go and check the help. What do we, what do I need to give in the connect block? Okay, let's open the help first of all. Yeah, so the help is getting opened. Okay, the help is open now. Now you can see here there is a connect block. So the connect block has to be given by something called as a TCON IP V4 data type. The TCON IP V4 data. We have to create this data type first of all. It's already available, but you have to type it exactly like this. Then we have to put up the configuration that we require on the TCON IPv4 
then we have to map it here so let's see how to do that so let's go to our uh, <coughs> main block and add a new block let's say i want a mb connect block modbus uh, say connect okay so inside the modbus connect let me create a <coughs> mb connect block so that is okay let's say connect score one so data type will be tcon underscore ip underscore v4 sorry v4 okay so see it got accepted now and if you open the connect block you can see it has multiple options inside right so the first thing is we need to enable the interface id the interface id will be 64 <coughs> so how do we know it is 64 you go to the main block you go to your uh, device configuration you click on your ethernet module here and you go to the system constants you will find the common address for the profinet interface that is 64 so don't worry about port 1 and port 2 address unless you are specifying some port specifically for uh, modbus in all other cases you just give 64 so both the ports will work together okay so i gave 64 so modbus connect 64 then the id so id means just a reference identifier just i will give one for now then if i create another mb master i can give two so connection type <coughs> you can leave it at default you need you don't have to set anything it's now set at 0b which means tcp ip modbus tcp ip then the active established you have to make it true okay then we have the address section so in the address section we have to give the address of the slave device address of the slave device in our case we are going to use a schneider plc as the slave a schneider plc as the slave so here let's say 192 168 0 0.18 is the address of the plc <coughs> then we have to give the remote port and the local port so in general terms modbus always works on the port 502 okay 502 so the remote port means the schneider plc will also work in the 502 port similarly our plc will also work modbus in the 502 port that's why we are giving 502 502 in two locations okay very simple okay if you have any doubts regarding this you can ask us during the classes live classes okay <coughs> now let's compile this once yes compiled let's go to the main block now here I can just brand from the connect block here that's it so now you can compile it no errors okay when I compile there is no error so let me make it a bit small okay now let's download this let's compile it a full compile will be better and a full download from the hardware because we have done some major hardware changes start search Eleven load consider as trusted yes so check before loading Continue without synchronization, stop all and load. So, yeah, you know the steps, right? Sometimes it asks, this is the first time. So, next time you will not have this much procedures to, you know, go through. Finish. Now minimize this. Now let's go online. Let's go online. <coughs> So as soon as you go online, so there is some value here. There is some value. So let's say uh, change to the display format to decimal. So tag to decimal. So it's 615 actually. So this might be a data that is already coming from the PLC. Okay. But we will quickly do a configuration on the slave PLC. So this is our slave PLC. So we are using the Echo Structure Machine Expert software. So in the configuration, uh, let me quickly... Uh, do a few things um, CD 24 r this is the plc we are using yes and i need to enable a few things so i need to enable the programming protocol modbus server and everything on the slave 
let's say 192, 168, 0 0.18. So this PLC already has some data there. That's why you are able to see that. I'm quickly applying it. <clears throat> yes, it's applied. Now let's go to the programming. And let's put a organizational block. And let's say MW100 percentage so MW0. One equal to percentage MW hundred, for example. So why we are given like this? So what is happening here is whatever data is in MW hundred will go to MW zero. That's it. Very simple. So logging. I'm just logging into the PLC. So this will be useful to create create multiple, you know, write multiple values. PC to controller. You okay? It should download now. Start controller. So now if you go to the programming section here, you can see the value is 0. Similarly, your PLC, the Siemens PLC would also be now gone to 0. This is because the value that we have in the Schneider PLC is 0. So now I am going to write some value into MW100. You can see that gets immediately displayed over here. Say I want to change to 500. So 500 is here. So I want to say 4787, sorry 4789. So 4789 is updated in the MP client. So let's say I want 7415. 7415 is updated onto the MP client. 12478, 12478 is updated instantaneously into the MP client onto the PLC. Okay. So MW0 corresponds to 4001. MW0 corresponds to 4001 here. So uh, it is always, you know, the Modbus address never starts with the last digit 0, the first digit 0 there. So it is always starts at 1. That's why the holding register is starting from 4001. Um, that's the reason mainly here. Okay. So now let's say I want to have read multiple data. I think already <coughs> we already did this in uh, our RS485. But let's say we will do it again once more here. So go offline. So now I want to read maybe four data. I want to read four data. So I am changing the value to MB data length as four. Then I need to change the data pointer to a array. So let's create one more data block and let's say call it as MB score read. So one major thing you have to do always is you have to change the optimized block access. You have to remove this access so that it can create individual bit level addresses and word level addresses. So here let's say mb underscore read. So data type will be array of integer but the total value will be 4. So 0 to 3. 0 to 3 which is a total of 4 values. Okay. You can see there are 4 sorry 0 to 3. There are totally four values. So when I do the compilation, you can see that it created the offset data. So now go to the main block. Very simple again, MB read. Try and drop the pointer address here. Try and drop the pointer address here. Compile it once. Download it. So now you have to make sure that your uh, slave device or your server has these four registers in them. Otherwise, the block might give you an error. The block in our PLC might give an error. So if your status is showing 7005, 7006, then it is no problem. Yeah. So it's not a problem. It is trying to read all the four registers from there. So mod read. See here, yeah, 12478, the previous value is already here. Now let's see whether we can see all the data. Where is the live data? Okay. So the monitor value is here. So here let me just quickly do some small changes. So let me create uh, a few more organization blocks so that we can see four different values on the system. So here let's say I want to give percentage MW1 colon equal to percentage 
mw 101 so whatever is in 101 will come here so let's copy this so let's put it here control v so 102 will be in mw 2 v 3 will be in mw 3 you see that this is just a simple you know uh, example sometimes this might be coming from another plc from a modbus tcp based slave it could be a dcs it could be a scada system it could be anything it could be anything speech to controller so programming now you can see there are four values the three values here so here if you can see if you change the value of mw0 mw101 to 4578 so you can see that the value got moved here similarly if you change the value of mw102 then let's say 545 five, sorry let's say 9874 you can see 9874 got updated so here if you change the value of mw103 so 1234 got updated there so to read multiple registers you need to create a array of integer you have to you have to create a array of integer and this is mandatory and this is mandatory so you can even read a total of 100 registers at a time so in in uh, the, in Siemens the maximum number of register you can read at a time is 105 if I'm not wrong let's uh, uh, quickly look at the help so the MB mode so zero yes so you can read up to a total of 125 holding registers 125 holding registers from the slave at one time so if you want to do it for the second time okay you want 250 registers from the same device then first you have to read 125 then create another second mb master block okay or mb client block put the connection id as 2 in the connection uh, mb connect block and you have to do it like that okay that's it no, no not much change there okay what you have to do you have to create another mb client so the mb connect block will be having a different connection id everything else is same the uh, the ip address the configuration 502 active established true everything will be same only this will change only this will change right so this is how we read a single register or multiple registers from a modbus tcp server using the mb client block in s71200 plc thank you